Hey YouTube, Corpersan here. Today I want to help you answer the age-old question, which class should I main in MapleStory? This 2D mushroom game has over 45 classes, but thankfully picking a main isn't half as difficult as picking a name for your character. There are some real struggles. To help you figure out which class you want to main, I divided classes based on their playstyle, because I think that in the end if you enjoy the way a class plays, you're more likely to stick to it. All classes have their pros and cons, so in the end it's up to you to decide to what's best for you. There are some rewarding systems in this game like Legion and Link skills, so there's no disadvantage for trying out multiple classes. Also keep in mind that some classes change their playstyle once they reach the 5th job advancement at level 200. For this video I divided all classes in 3 playstyle categories. Simple classes, those are classes with a straightforward classic playstyle, Combo classes, those are classes that rely on comboing the skills together and resource management classes. Those are classes that have to manage a special resource or gauge to keep dishing out the damages. Some classes can fall in multiple categories, but I will place them in only one, so please keep this in mind. I want to start this video off with the smallest group of classes in MapleStory, the combo classes. Combo classes have a high number of buttons to press to play and are just more intense to play than the more simple classes. Messing up a combo could mean lower EXP rates or even death at certain bosses. However, not every combo class is as punishing as the other. The Thunderbreaker is the Knight of Sickness Pirate class. This pirate usually combos 2 or 3 skills together in quick succession when grinding or bossing. Their combos are straightforward and there's a lot of room to make mistakes and ease into the class. They are mobile and have decent survivability as well and their skills are shark and lightning themed. Another class that relies on combos is the hero class Aaron. This class literally generates combos with her attacks. Each of her basic attacks changes depending on the amount of times pressed. Aarons are pretty chill to play and usually only combo a couple of their skills together. They have multiple attacks that can be triggered by inputting certain arrow key combinations and their basic attack key, making this a mobile and versatile class which is pretty easy to get into. A different type of combo class is the hero magician class Evan. This class performs his skills together with his dragon mirror to create new attacks. Evan lets his dragon mirror perform an attack and if Evan then uses a certain skill, a mirror's attack will change. Evan can then also recall his dragon to debuff enemies or buff himself. Evan is a burst class with decent grinding and bossing, but it does take a while for this class to grow strong enough to really start dishing out the damages. The thief class Cadena has a ton of attacks that all have very short cooldowns. Mabelers need to combo Cadena's attacks in a certain way to quickly dart across the map and dish out damage. Cadena has a special skill called Muscle Memory that pops out every time Cadena uses a different weapon to attack, dealing additional damage. This makes comboing a must. Cadena can be pretty squishy early on, but is a great damage dealer with a ton of mobility. But with animation cancelling being a thing for some skills, this class does have a higher skill ceiling than most other classes. Mercedes the Elven Hero is a combo class through and through, with their skill Ignis Roar boosting their damage every time skills are comboed together. Mercedes has various aerial combos that can be used by linking numerous skills together. Similar to Cadena, Mercedes has a high skill ceiling with various skills that can be animation cancelled, but hey, you can also ride a unicorn. The next two classes are technically also resource management classes, but I find that their combos define them more, so I place them in this category. Zero are a time limited class that can only be created ever so often. They don't have MP, but instead use a resource called Time Force to perform skills. Zero is unique as in that you're playing two different characters at the same time. Those two can combo their skills together and tag in and out of battle. Zeros have great mobility, and comboing with this class is a must if you want to take full advantage of their kit. The final combo class on this list is the Resistance Warrior Blaster. Blaster has an arm cannon with bullets that need to be managed, but thanks to their combos, they can technically refill their arm cannon indefinitely. Blasters combo their attacks with their bobbing and weaving skills, which need to be held down and released. This recharges bullets or animation cancels certain attacks. Blasters are all about animation cancelling with crazy high button input. Out of all seven combo classes, Blaster is the one that takes the crown when it comes to high skill ceiling and amount of buttons to be pressed per minute. This is the most difficult class to play properly in MapleStory. The next group contains 17 classes and those are mostly defined by their resource management, that being gauges, special types of mana or summons that need to be maintained. There are two classes that rely a lot on summons, which is what we're starting with. The Explorer Crosshair has a ton of summons that can be placed all over the map, dealing damage and buffing the Crosshair at the same time. Some summons provide random buffs depending on which crewmate the Crosshair summoned. Their playstyle is simple though, with a straightforward 4 job grinding skill and amazing 5 job skills, as well as decent mobility. Then there is the Mechanic, who brings an army of robots to the battle. This class has a ton of summons and thanks to their robot mastery skill, the damage increases the more robots are summoned. This class is 
tanky, can provide party support as well as a ton of burst damage. And I don't want to be biased, but that Mega Carrier skill is one of the most awesome looking skills in the game. Mechanics do take a while to get going though, but thanks to their huge amounts of summons, they make excellent grinders once they're strong enough. Next up are four classes that all have a gauge that makes them transform. We're starting off with the Explorer Pirate, the Buccaneer. When a Buccaneer attacks, he charges energy. Once fully energized, his attacks become empowered and he gains an energy effect behind him. Visually, not the biggest of transformations, but the empowered attacks are amazing and this class truly starts to shine after the 5th job advancement, being one of the easiest to train classes as long as you can keep your energy up. Another class with a transformation gauge is Ilium. This class has a very unique playstyle. His attacks are directed to his orb, so positioning that thing is a big part of your playstyle. Ilium's attacks fill up a gauge, and once it reaches the max after the third job, you can transform it to an avatar of destruction. Gaining wings, Ilium can fly across the map, unleashing devastating attacks. This class is pretty powerful, even without too much funding, but has a unique playstyle that maybe not everyone will like. Next up is the pirate class Ark. This class has a more visual transformation that can be triggered with the energy he collects. And the higher you fill up his gauge, the longer he can maintain his transformed state. Ark is a mobile, versatile and strong class. Most of his skills have short cooldowns, making him a candidate for the combo class list as well, as you'll be using most of them in order to travel around the map and train. Ark skills move you around a lot, but can be animation cancelled to stop the movement, so this class does have a higher skill ceiling as well. But overall a very strong and pretty well-rounded class, pretty good for beginning maples as well if you're into that. The final transformation class with a gauge is Kaiser. This class is a great all-rounder with nice mobbing and bossing. He fills up his gauge with his attacks and once filled up he undergoes a massive transformation, improving his skills and gaining an awesome look. While transformed, Kaisers have increased mobility and damage. They also have a small combo element where they can use their dragon link and basic attack skills to fill up their gauge faster. Next up are classes with a gauge, but this gauge is used to perform certain skills or enhance attacks. There is for example the explorer archer Pathfinder who can charge his gauge with relic energy. Once enough energy has been collected, Pathfinder can use certain skills until it is depleted again. There also is a secondary mechanic, which is that emblem in the middle of the gauge. This emblem changes depending on the skills that Pathfinder uses, and the effect of some skills changes depending on the emblem shown in the gauge. Pathfinders are a versatile archer with great grinding and mobility. Another gauge class is Hayato, who collects sword energy to boost his stats and use certain skills. Hayato is also a combo class, and while you will be using them for a special combo buff, after 5th job you're mostly spamming multiple skills with massive range instead of your actual combos. Hayato has some amazing big range attacks that are on very low cooldowns. Hayato's can also switch stances, so he's always equipped for the right situation, albeit bossing or grinding. A class whose playstyle completely revolves around this gauge is Luminous. This class has a light and dark gauge. Those can be filled by using light skills or dark skills respectively. When both sides are balanced, Luminous enters equilibrium mode. In this mode, all his attacks are enhanced and he can spam some of his skills that else would have a cooldown. Luminous is one of the most amazing grinders in the game and also very easy to play. A class with a crazy amount of gauges is Hoyong, who has multiple types of energy he can collect. Hoyong could be seen as a combo class as most of his skills have low cooldowns that need to be juggled. Because of his different gauges and cooldowns there is a lot to keep an eye on with this class. But Hoyong is also one of the more powerful classes and is great at grinding and bossing. Plus they have a ton of mobility and bossing tools like invincibility frames as well. Next up is the Xenon class. This is MapleStory's only hybrid class who is both a pirate and a thief. This android has an energy system that needs to be charged and some of his skills consume this energy. Xenon also is the only class in the game that uses three different stats, strength, dexterity and luck. He's a great grinder and can place down various fields to help boost his grinding and damage. Xenons can also switch modes between some of their skills to optimize their training in different maps. The newly released Kane class uses a gauge as well. This gauge can hold a couple of stacks that can be used to enhance Kane's skills. Changing his attacks into bigger ones to deal more damage or have an additional special effect. Kane's gauge fills pretty fast but charges have to be used manually so you'll be keeping an eye on that gauge regardless. Kane is a great grinder and bosser with amazing mobility thanks to his Spider-Man like chain skills that allow him to swing from platform to platform. The final class with a gauge is Adele. Adele's gauge is only used to summon swords, which might not sound like much but this is actually a core part of Adele's kit. 
each time the bar is fully charged, additional swords can be summoned. Besides that, Adele is a very simple and straightforward class with some short buff timers to keep in mind, including the swords that don't have the longest uptime. Adele is durable and a great grinder and bosser, an excellent class to pick up if you're new to MapleStory. Next up are 5 classes that have either special resources instead of mana or use completely different mechanics not involving mana at all. One of those classes who doesn't have any MP is Angelic Buster. Instead this class uses a recharge mechanic. Every attack has a chance to recharge which allows Angelic Buster to keep using her skills. Mapleus might find its mechanic a bit annoying pre fort job, but afterwards your attacks have such a high chance to trigger a recharge that usually you will be able to keep spamming your skills. Angelic Buster is a simple to play class and a heavy hitter. While her skills don't deal a lot of lines of damage, she deals a ton of damage with insanely high skill damage percentages. The Magician class from another world, Kinesis, uses Psychic Points instead of MP to use some skills. Some of his skills recharge his Psychic Points and others consume it. It's nothing crazy, but you'll have to keep an eye on it. Kinesis is an amazing farmer, but not a super popular class. He really shines off the fifth job, but can sometimes struggle with bosses that move around a lot. But then again, he can throw trains around, so that's pretty cool. The Demon Slayer class uses a special resource as well instead of mana. His Demon Fury is needed to use most skills and can be recovered either passively or by regular attacking, by defeating monsters or by using his hyper skills. It isn't that difficult to keep it up as Demon Slayers have all the tools to gain more fury. Demon Slayers are very well rounded with great mobility, grinding and bossing but can feel a little bit clunky at times if you have lower attack speed. The final resource management class is Kana. Similar to Demon Slayers, Kana uses a special type of mana to use skills. They restore mana passively by walking over mana veins they create automatically and every third hit of their Shikigami hunting skill. Usually as a Kana you'll have no problem managing your mana. Kanas are one of the best farmers and supportive bossing classes in the game. They are the only class that can boost the spawn rate giving them an insane edge over other classes. So we are almost halfway through the class list. The next 25 classes all have a, in my opinion, simple and straightforward playstyle without having to worry too much about combos or special gauges. I again divided up this group into classes that excel at giving support, classes that are more tanky than others, classes that excel at grinding and classes that excel at bossing or dealing burst damage. Again, if I place a class in one group, it doesn't mean it's bad at the others, just that this characterizes the playstyle of the classes more. We're starting off with a few more niche classes. Let's go over the supportive classes since there only are a few of those. The Explorer Mage Bishop is one of the few supportive classes in the game equipped with various healing skills and useful party buffs. This class is usually a welcome sight at bossing parties, increasing EXP, stats and protecting party members from harm. They also have a very useful revive skill as well. However, this class is somewhat outshined by the Kana class and not the strongest class out there. The second class with insane supporting skills is the Beast Tamer. Once they are in cat mode, they can provide a wide array of buffs to party members simply by being in the same map as them. Beast Tamers have four different animal modes, making them not just supporters but also decent grinders and bosses with a ton of mobility and versatility. This is also a time limited class, so create one when you have the chance. There are some more classes that offer support, but I place those under different categories. Classes like Kana and the Battle Mage can be a huge help in boss fights as well. The next niche category is tanky classes. Those are classes that excel at shrugging off damage and sometimes even bolstering the defense of their party members. The Mihil class is insanely tanky thanks to his Royal Guard skill. This skill blocks incoming damage and Mihil becomes invincible for 4 seconds. Combined with a 6 second cooldown, it is very hard for monsters to take down this class. However, his grinding and bossing isn't anything special. His Royal Guard skill has to be timed exactly when Mihil is hit by a monster else the skill will fill, adding a layer of skill to your grind. Another great tanky class is the Explorer Warrior Paladin. This class has crazy high defenses and a chance to guard any attack. Paladins are also masters of the elements with their elemental charges and have decent grinding abilities. Paladins can share their guard ability with their party members, can heal themselves and have a revive skill, so they offer more support than most warriors as well. Another class that's very tanky is the Dark Knight, not because of his insanely high defenses, but because of his continuous healing thanks to their little floating eye companion, as well as their life step skills that allows them to sustain for a long time without getting in any danger of dying. And when they do fall in battle, this class is instantly revived and becomes invincible for a whooping 40 seconds. Dark Knights are not the greatest bosses or mobbers, but will outlive everyone else thanks to their almost infinite life stealing. The Demon Avenger takes this concept one step further. This class has no MP, but instead all his skills cost HP. 
This class doesn't use any traditional stats, but instead plus all of its points and HP, Demon Avengers can heal themselves and boost their attack with their Exceed skill, enhancing their attacks. This class has high base damage and survivability, but lacks a bit in mobbing due to their short range skills. Another surprisingly tanky class is the Pirate Hero Shade. This class heals every time they attack, can debuff monsters to heal even more, have a passive revive and can remove debuffs and block incoming damage with their Spirit Ward skill. And even their Link skill has a chance to revive them as well, if they do manage to die. Shades are very colorful and it's a very easy class to play. Shades do lack some damage early on their adventure, but are solid and an easy to play class. Those are all classes that excel at being tanky. Let's talk about all the classes that specialize in mobbing next. The Ice Lightning Mage is an explorer mage magician that is great at mobbing. Their 5th job skill Ice Age has crazy range and their frozen orb and chain lightning skills make mobbing a breeze. A nice cold breeze. This class can grind really fast and offers some utility in boss fights as well with their absolute zero aura and their freezing breath skill. Stunning monsters and increasing resistances. The Knight of Sickness Dawn Warrior is an excellent mobber as well. Thanks to their fifth job skills there is hardly any time where the map isn't covered in explosions and damage. This class has a stance mechanic and can freely switch between their sun and moon stance to change their attacks. The only downside of this class is their low base MP and high MP skill costs. So make sure to bring some potions if you plan on leveling up this class. Speaking Speaking of Knights of Sickness, the Knight of Sickness Wind Archer is a fun mobber as well. With a ton of low cooldown 5th job skills that can cover large portions of the map, this class can be a surprisingly good mobber. They also have decent mobility and their guild barrier protects them from damage during boss fights. The only downside for this class is that for some reason the Wind Archer has like a ton of buffs, so you'll spend most of your time buffing yourself up. Another great mage with amazing grinding and some party skills as well is the Battle Mage. Once this class reaches 5th job, their summons can take over the entire map, making grinding very easy and very simple. Their aura side skill has decent range as well and can take care of any monsters until the summons are off cooldown again. Battle Mages have auras that they can use to buff up themselves and their party members, and they can apply a debuff to enemies with a teleport skill, popping that debuff to deal additional damage when they hit the monster again. They are pretty mobile and have the best teleport in the game in my opinion. The Pirate class Cannoneer is a crazy grinder as well. Their skills already have a ton of range and lines and after they reach the 5th job advancement, their cannonballs that slowly travel across the map help their monster killing by a ton. They can even unleash bombardments on the map for even more damage. They have a few party buffs as well and great mobility, but their attack speed is one of the slowest in the game. Another class that's great at grinding is the Knight of Sickness Blaze Wizard. This class literally juggles fireballs to attack monsters. It's a unique playstyle that you'll have to like, but their grinding is pretty good. They are a mage with flash jump and can place down a teleporter in the map. They can also create a shield for themselves and place down zones that boost their attack speed and damage. Another decent grinder is Jet. Jets have great mobility that helps them get around the map quickly to dispose of enemies. They got a buff some time ago, which this class desperately needed. Their grinding is pretty okay now and their fidget of skills where they fly a space scooter is really fun to use. If space cowboys are your thing then make sure to check out Jet. The resistance archer wild hunter is a bit of an in between. They have great mobbing thanks to their fidget job skills and summons as well as their great mobility, but their bossing is pretty nice as well. This class rides a jaguar but can dismount it and control the jaguar separately as well, riding it into battle when grinding and dismounting when bossing. Another amazing grinder that hasn't been released yet at the time of this video but will be by the end of 2021 is the Lara class. This class can use skills on special veins that are created around the map, popping up a spirit that attacks. Those skills have insane range and no cooldown. The only downside is that the veins spawn randomly, however later on Lara does get some skills that allow her to place down her own veins and this class offers some supportive skills as well like a healing zone. I would put the next and final 9 classes as bossing classes. Those are classes characterized by their ability to deal a ton of damage to boss monsters. A classic example of a burst class would be the Night Lord. This explorer thief throws around throwing stars and can deal some amazing damage to bosses. Their spread throw and throw blasting skill together with their assassin mark that makes your attacks pop out even more stars allow for some great burst damage. And their grinding isn't half bad either thanks to their 5th job skills. Their 4th job grinding skill showdown also increases EXP and drop rates allowing this class to grind just a little bit faster, however they do lack survivability. I wasn't really sure where to place this class since technically they could be anywhere. The Thief Hero Phantom. This class has a unique skill stealing mechanic where he can steal skills from explorer classes all the way up to their hyper skills. Because of this they can grind at decent rates and provide both damage and support to boss battles. They have some amazing burst with their luck of the draw skill but are plagued by low skill damage percentages. However their aesthetics are pretty cool. Another class that's a boss slayer through and through is the Explorer Warrior Hero. 
This class charges orbs with his attacks increasing his damage. This class can use their flip-jump skills and hyper skills to boost their damage by a ton, easily melting through any boss with their boosted main grinding and bossing skill Raging Blow. This class is very simple to play and while their grinding isn't the best, their bossing surely makes up for that. Another burst class similar to the Night Lord is the Night Walker, the Knight of Cygnus Thief. This class has a bad aesthetic and similar to the Explorer counterpart specializes in burst damage. When Night Walkers attack, they can summon small bats that bounce around enemies and have a little more utility as well like a bind and an invincibility frame. An Explorer Mage that specializes a bit more in bossing is the Fire Poison Mage, dealing enormous damage and applying damage over time. Fire Poison Mages require a bit of setup with their Poison Mist skill which they can also erupt to deal massive damage. They can spread their poison and fire across the map to grind at decent rates, albeit not as good as the Ice Lightning Mage, but this class has several single target attacks to help them deal with bosses instead. The Explorer Bowmaster is another difficult to categorize class. This Archer class can enhance their arrows to heal them or deal additional damage. This class can place down turrets and with their 5th job skills they can create after images and apply every arrow enhancement to their attacks for a short duration. This class is pretty straightforward to play and not too flashy, decent at grinding and decent at bossing. The Explorer Dual Blade is a Thief class that's also an Explorer but has their own origin story. Most of the Dual Blader attacks deal additional damage against bosses. This class also uses two weapons, hence the Dual Blader name. They're very mobile and their grinding gets a good boost with their 5th job skills. They're one of the original bossing classes and make for excellent bossing mules. Another burst class is the Explorer Archer, Marksman. They ignore more monster defense the further they are away from monsters and their piercing arrow grinding skill deals more damage the more monsters it pierces. With their snipe skill they can take down any boss and their 5th skill grants them a ton of burst and better mobbing as well thanks to split shot. Whenever this skill is active it will feel amazing to grind with this class. The Marksman can also create a shield and has a chance to recover HP thanks to their mortal blow skill. They actually are pretty tanky despite being an archer. And the final class that we haven't mentioned yet is the Explorer Thief, the Shadow. This hard hitting class has all the tools to take down bosses, with their fidget job skills further increasing their mobility and burst. They can steal mesos and potions from monsters and mesos can be exploded with their unique meso explosion skill, a powerful grinding tool once shadowers are funded enough. While in this video I couldn't show maple story classes at their highest potential, nor go too deep into their skills and kits, I hope it at least pushes you in the right direction to finding your main. And that was all for today. As always, many thanks to our members for making this video possible. Thanks to Niels de Konik, Rama Waar, Sebastian Hennoy, F. Alex, Riley Oss, Terry Kim, Varese, Dries Sumker, Plax, Wiley, Francisco Sousa, History Cannon, Backspace, OTI, Simak, Safronix, Alonso, BG Extremes, Anwar Anishai, Brandon, Frank Bouguet, Ziggy Deer, Flidiot, Beamer WT, Knife Sue, Chen125, Pinky Traveler, Cloudfix, Gusus Rodriguez, Sir QQ Morse, Froggy11, Sir Tito655, Grayson Lee, Riser RU, Brandon Cam, Vyra, Bruno H, Dular, Trevor, Yuki436, Afterlord underscore MS, Sinfalido, Rithius, John Man, Lucky Beats, Justin Ville, Silvio Nato, and Stevie Zhang. If you'd like to be mentioned here as well and get early access to new videos, make sure to check out that join button below this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Stay safe and happy mapling!